Hello everyone, welcome to this week's topic of Harangue with Haley. Um, with football season around the corner, I figured the best topic to start with would be the um, new ruling of the NFL. Um, for those who may not know, the NFL actually uh, put up a new rule stating that players that were previously kneeling during the national anthem um, will be fined for that this year, this season. And um, those that uh, choose to um, opt out of the national anthem can stay in the locker room, but for all those that come out into the field, they will have to stand. Um, and this is in response to the protesting that was has been going on since Kaepernick started this protesting of kneeling about 21 months ago. Um, for those who aren't clear about um, kind of the origins of this protest, um, about 21 months ago you have the um, quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, Colin Kaepernick. He started this protest by sitting um, to protest uh, minorities being oppressed in this country. Um, he actually transitioned to kneeling after talking to military veteran Nate Boyer uh, because that was deemed as a, more respectful for the veterans because um, he did not want to disrespect the military veterans in any way, of course. Um, so I think that was the start of kind of the huge uproar that started um, last about two years ago at this point of kneeling during the national anthem. And overall, I think that this protest has been taken, it, the concept has been taken and ran with by so many people what the purpose of his protesting is. It's been deemed as un-American, unpatriotic, um, just disrespectful to the flag and the country and the nation as a whole. And it's certainly, that's not what the original message was at all. Even um, the president was tw tweeted, if a player wants to the privilege of making millions of dollars in the NFL, or other leagues, he or she should not be allowed to disrespect our great American flag country and um, should stand for the national anthem. If not, you're fired. Find something else to do. And I think even he missed the message that was posed by um, Kaepernick. This has, again, nothing to do with disrespecting um, the nation. If anything, this is supposed to uplift the nation and shed light on um, an issue, a deeply rooted issue that this country has. And anyone that can go on Google can see that. Um, so I think the message that Colin Kaepernick is trying to, was trying to show has been completely misconstrued. So um, what I wanna do is what is that message? What, what is the protesting about? What is, what is going on in America when it comes to minorities? Um, so we have a couple facts here that I grabbed and um, like I said, these are just examples, some examples of um, the statistics of minorities in um, in America right now. We have NCAACP, they posted that although African Americans and Hispanics make up 32% of the U.S. population, they make up 56% of all people incarcerated in 2015. So with that fact, we're stating that you have a rather small portion of um, the nation, Hispanics, Black Americans, um, both of them combined is 36%. However, they make up more than half of the incarcerated population. Um, and that's something to hold on to while I run through these facts right now. So um, according to the 2015 National Survey, you have um, 17 million whites and 4 million African Americans have reported using illicit drugs in the past month. So um, for that factor stating that, you know, 17 million whites, 4 million uh, African Americans are both have both used drugs this past month. 17 million does seem a little higher than 4 million, obviously, but that just is um, due to the larger population of white Americans in America. However, um, the same the same website found that um, although whites and blacks in America in America use drugs at the same rate, um, black Americans are arrested six times more likely than white Americans. So that kind of you see that 56% of the jail population, that's where that comes from, is you have a population that, not saying doing drugs is wrong, obviously it is, but if we're looking at equality here, that's not equality. How can two races be doing the same drug, the same activity, the same illegal activity, yet you have one that's incarcerated six times more likely 
than another for the same thing. And that's not equality. Um, if you continue to read um, facts that I found, you have the um, American Journal of Public Health found that um, Black Americans, uh, Hispanics, and Native Americans are three times more likely to be killed during legal intervention than a white man. So that's stated. That's stating that when it comes to the uh, legal interventions, minorities are more likely to be killed by police rather than uh, protected in whatever the uh, situation is. And that's definitely something to look at. Are, are we saying that minorities are more violent or is there something else that is being um, used when uh, intervening when it comes to minorities? Um, and I think that's definitely something to look at, especially um, university researchers at University of San Diego State found that in 2014, when race and ethnicity was visible, black drivers are 20% more likely to be pulled over while driving and again that's that's discrimination you can't pull somebody over because you see their race and think that they might be doing something because of their race or you they they're doing the same turn that somebody else is doing but yet you s use their race as a reason to pull them over you can't justify it in any way when it comes to using race um and lastly um with the study that i think that kind of amplifies this whole um this whole protest is the researchers of University of Illinois, they found that they analyzed 42 studies and found that people are quicker to pull the trigger at an armed black um, suspect than an armed white suspect. And I think that says, uh, that's a profound statement because you're, you're pretty much saying you're gonna end, you have two people here with the same, um, same aggression, both armed, yet because this person is black or minority, you're, their life means less. You're you're gonna end their life quicker because because of their skin color. That's essentially what you're saying, um, and that's something that has been going on in this country for a long time. And I think Colin Kaepernick is trying to shed light um, to this country about that. We see the videos on Facebook of um, wrongful arrests of uh, of people being treated poorly, and it's being ignored. And I think Colin Kaepernick is giving a voice to those people that don't have the platform he has. He is in the NFL. Um, he is someone that's deemed as a public figure. So why wouldn't he use that platform to protest for people that normally would not have that chance? And I think it's very silly for people to even throw the question, well, what is he doing in the off season? He's not protesting in the off season. Why would he? I mean, and I'm not saying he's not, but why not use the platform of a national game with coverage of millions to use that to pla that platform to protest that I, I believe that's the best platform to, pr to protest you don't get that opportunity every day when you're an, an average American so the fact that he has that and chose that route knowing the backlash that he could receive and he did receive I think that shows a lot about his character and a lot about the message he's sending because if a man is willing to lose his job and face uh, backlash from the nation, from the president, for a cause, and is sticking to his word, that should show a lot about how deeply he feels and how how much this is bothering, this is bothering him. And it should, because these are facts that are, they're real and they're happening. They, may not, they might not be happening to me, they might not be happening to you, but they're happening to Americans out there, Americans. So that's something that we have to take in consideration. If this is a nation that's supposed to be built on equality and or a melting pot of different, of everyone is welcome here, we need to show that. And I think what Kaepernick is saying is right now, we're not we're not showing that. Um, and I think that needs to change. Um, so overall, I think that I personally see nothing wrong with the message he was trying to send. If we have hate groups that are legally around, allowed to display their beliefs and how they feel, um, they're able to walk through the Capitol um, as a known hate group and nobody has an issue with that that's that's okay yet you have a man that is peacefully protesting kneeling displaying those same first amendment rights yet he is without a job he's being criticized by the media by the president um, for a cause that's actually just that's actually happening every day i think that's something to be said um and so i just want to leave the message i want to leave everyone with is Maybe if we all took uh, time to step back 
from our own world, our own perspective, and look at things more objectively, look at a situation as not how you would experience it yourself, but how somebody else might be experiencing it, we might find some common ground um, with not only this protest, but with other issues in this country as well. Um, we need to do a better job of just being united and not being so quick to be um, hateful and judgmental on an issue that maybe you don't know as much about as you think you do. Um, so uh, that's all I have to say this week with Harangue with Haley, and I look forward to haranguing with you guys next week.